Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Uh, we've got a very fun one today. Uh, we were just discussing what we're going to be going through, and uh, it's going to be some uh, kind of like a, a challenge based uh, design element um, of some poster designs. Uh, I'm joined by Thin. Uh, Thin, welcome to Adobe Live. Um, how are you doing? I hope you're good. Hello, everybody. Yeah, thank you so much for having me uh, today. Um... I'm doing good, a bit nervous, but I'm super excited for the challenge today because this is the first time I'm going to do this kind of challenge to myself. So, yeah. Thing. Yeah, no worries. Well, <laughs> we've uh, got nothing to be nervous about. We have plenty of friendly faces who join us in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to come and join us in the chat, by the way, then head on over to behance.net forward slash live. Um, and uh, you'll see all the live streams. We've got Adobe Live. We're here in the UK streams, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. But there's a whole host of other stuff and catch up as well that you can go and join. Um, so welcome everyone in the chat. Let us know uh, where you're watching from, who you are. Um, we've got some friendly, familiar faces already. Stefan, Sandrine, Tim, Sean, Angus, Melanie, and uh, plenty of other people I'm sure watching as well. Um, you may be watching on YouTube, but if you want to join the chat, then come join us on Behance. So this, uh, this stream today, we're going to go through uh, a poster design challenge, I believe. Um, now, I got quite excited when you mentioned this because this sounded quite, uh, quite eventful. And if, uh, if people aren't familiar with your work already, it's, um, I mean, it, it's got personality, right? It's got a lot of passion. It's got a lot of uh chaos and other things so doing a challenge based design sounds brilliant to me um do you want to just explain what your your thinking is for what this challenge is for yourself uh should i introduce a bit first about me as a designer yeah then... sure so yeah, absolutely so hi again um i'm thin i'm from vietnam but i'm currently studying motion graphic in barcelona and i'm in my final year now but I want to become a multidisciplinary designer. So as you can see, this is my about page on my website. It's still under construction, but um, I love to play with different type of media and mixing stuff in a very chaotic, chaotic way, <laughs> as you may notice. And in a, in a very- I love the chaos. <laughs> yeah, in a very non-systematic way of design and thinking because I, I don't know, it's just how my brain function. I think like sometimes I feel that it's quite hard to put your thought down, you know, it's just like here and there, it's floating around there and just like flush everything out on the screen and <laughs> there you go, it's my design finished. So amazing. So this really is like a, an insight into your brain, really. It's the bit between your ears. This, this is what what's yeah. happening in there yeah <laughs> and yeah for today i would love to because i watch a lot of uh, youtube tutorial on photoshop on so many other b programs as well and you will notice as uh, many many um many youth uh, graphic designer on youtube they love to these do this kind of challenge that oh designing a poster in 60 minutes or designing a poster in 15 minutes mm -hmm. So today I would love to do that for myself to try out for the first time to design the first photo in five minutes and then the second one in 10 minutes and then the last one in 30 minutes to see what I can come up with. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. And uh, I'm wondering if we might be able to get some input from the chat as well. Um, maybe there's you know a little bit of uh, direction that could be you know given if we're going to open this up for chaos, then let's open it up for everyone. <laughs> and uh, Melanie's already mentioned, um, uh, excited about the session and uh, asking if anyone's designing along, which I think is actually a, a great shout out. So if anyone else wants to join in uh, and set yourself your own challenge, um, then by all means, join in and uh, maybe we can post them somewhere. Um, maybe post them on Instagram with a hashtag Adobe Live or Twitter or maybe in the Discord. Um, wherever or just keep it to yourself you know this, that this would be fun. cool actually yeah um so do you have a a brief or an idea for what you 
uh, want your poster to be about? Like, what are you, mm. what are you postering? I'm, I'm thinking to, well, the main, the main idea I was thinking just the information of the poster will be uh, about the live stream today, for example, Adobe Live <laughs> on Tuesday, 15 of November at 1 p.m. with you and me. Yep. And that's the basic information, but the visual, I have a fun, um, I have an idea today. Let's experiment with AI as well, because Ooh. that's what I've okay. uh, been working on at this moment. And I feel that AI is super fun too for a designer in general, if you yep. know how to collaborate with the, the tool, not hating on it. It can be amazing asset for us as designer. Mm -hmm. So because of the the time challenge, I think AI may be the some of the most useful way to generate image in yep. a short amount of time for yeah. this particular challenge. And yeah. Well, I mean, when you think of graphic design, um, as a graphic designer, we're just, you know, piecing together bits of type, bits of imagery, sometimes even moving parts and, you know, and then processing it or taking it analog and then bringing it back digital. So really AI is just being used to create one of your assets. It's a little bit like if you're working with a photographer, you know, there's, there's no offense to the designer by the fact that they didn't take the photo, you're just assembling it. So mm -hmm. AI to create that asset and background image is how you then work with it and tear it apart and, and create something. Um, yeah, exciting. I've, I've played a little bit with, uh, some AI image creation. Um, Which mostly to, did you use? I can't remember the name of it. Um, Tim might be able to say actually, because he was the one who gave me the link to it. Um, and, uh, it was more for me, the way that I think of it is cause I'm not a very good illustrator. Um, mm. it's, you know, I want to create illustrations of things. I've got, you know, images of stuff that I think would look great drawn, but because I'm a terrible illustrator, <laughs> I, I can't visualize it. I can't actually put it down onto paper. Um, and so AI could be a, a great opportunity there. Um, and then, you know, to create posters and add typography. And that's where my strong suit sort of lies on things is, is the typography stuff. So yeah, that could be fun. So, mm -hmm. Uh, Tim's just mentioned uh, stable diffusion via Dream Studio. Uh, yeah. I think but today I would like to use Mid Journey because of their recent update. The result okay. is amazing, striking. I just have an idea of this um, this morning how to uh, of the the image that I'm gonna generate for this uh, poster challenge. And should we start? Um, yeah. Uh, how do you wanna How do you wanna set the timer? Do you wanna prep an artboard or anything, and then set your timer, or is that part of the five minutes as well? Wait. <laughs> Let's set everything prepare first, and then uh, we can start the time when I'm actually start designing. Cool. Is this okay? Okay. Let's first. Uh, I'm gonna write the information I want in the poster. You know, it's funny. I was actually uh, working on a poster design myself, a uh, an animated poster um, earlier today, and it's it's been a while since I've done some like, you know, poster or editorial based things, uh, and I had to remind myself put the information out first so that you know what you're working with, rather than trying to design. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's it's so valuable just knowing what you're. Inf it's like having a wireframe or you know a project manager giving you the information um in a brief yeah it's true <laughs> today is 15 of november no the second i've uh, got a question from sean actually if you've tried the photoshop beta ai uh, i think i saw something about this very recently I, I didn't I didn't try that but the thing is 
if we're talking about AI, Adobe programs already use AI, like um, with, for example, the object selection in the, the Photoshop is also AI. Mm -hmm. And also other stuff in After, After Effects as well. So, yeah. I guess uh, even things like sky replacement on photography, at the moment we're working mm. with like, um, I guess stock imagery that gets manipulated and changed, but eventually that will become more AI driven, if not already. I may have missed the brief on that one, but hmm. Okay. Change of this. Sandrine's just said, I have a personal feud with that guy, Laura Mipsum. <laughs> Crops up <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> well, okay. We done the information. Um, actually, we can start a timer now. Should I okay. use my phone or? Uh, yeah, or I think Tim may be able to throw a timer on the screen, which I can uh, prompt you with uh, reminders if that helps. Yes, please. Cool. All right. Is this uh, on? Tim, start your timers, please. <laughs> get ready. <clears throat> I mean, oh. get <laughs> ready. <laughs> oh. Set. 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 Design. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. So I feel like we need some sort of confetti or something for the end as well. <laughs> it's running now, the timer. Yep. I cannot see on my, but anyway, okay. Can you please tell me if I have like one minute left or I'm half of the time? Yep, okay. will do. This morning, I have this idea of uh, generating screenshot of a Zoom meeting with puppies in the... <laughs> video boxes. <laughs> oh wow, so this it is done me. directly in Discord. Yeah, it's me journey. As you see, I already have this morning trial, but to be fair with the timing, I will start it again. So it's gonna take a bit but not too long, I think. In the meantime, I think I'm gonna deal with this type base here. Mm. Oh, I think we might have actually had a typo on screenshot. Oh. That was just spotted by Sean. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, but yeah. that's a thing. Screenshot. That's, a, <laughs> that's a thing about AI. Sometimes it can... Um, I would say ignore the grammar oh. error. Okay, that's so, good. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I saw meeting <laughs> screenshot of puppies in the video box. Let's wow. say I, I like the number. The, that top right one has a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will use the, the number three and number two. Hmm. Five minutes. Oh. Okay, so we're about two minutes in. <laughs> Super cute. Oliver saying AI knows what you mean. Yeah. AI knows what you're thinking. <laughs> It, it knows everything, so... <laughs> Sandrine's saying, how can it know what I mean, when most of the time I don't know what I mean? <laughs> okay, it's finished. I think I will okay. use this one. 
open original. Okay, so Let's we're saving Foster. And here we go. One thirty to go. Oh. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> Okay, I'll just move around with this information. I can't help but look at these puppies and wonder if they're if they're real puppies and they're they're not. How much time do I have left? Okay, I think I'm done with the first one. Okay, so this is the five minute poster. Uh, <laughs> give or take some time actually with the image generation. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, if a client asked you to make a poster in five minutes, uh, that wouldn't be a very good scenario. Um, but do you just want to talk through what you're thinking is on how you'd want to develop it further or what you're thinking i'm thinking for 10 minutes i keep working on this and to maybe fix on the typeface and maybe if i have time and play around with the um, the image with all the in the photoshop function mm -hmm. so cool mm -hmm. uh do we want to start 10 minutes now okay Let's put this first five minutes. Okay, let's start with the 10 minutes. All right. Mm. In three, we have the two, two, two one. <laughs> um, first of all, I think I need to look for some references to find some kind of inspiration. Just okay. maybe in one minute or two. For me, for me, the um, the, the most important thing when the designing thing is the the concept. And mm -hmm. with the concept already set in mind, all the technique and how you do it is gonna follow right very quickly. But I mostly struggle with the the concept to to find the stylization of how I want it to be. Okay. And normally Pinterest is the, the place I go to, but sometimes you will notice that it's quite toxic at <laughs> the platform <laughs> because it, it, it keeps you in the system. And, uh, but for this challenge, <gasps> let's be toxic. <laughs> mm. As you may know, my Pinterest page, you see, it's the graphic style is very, I think, alternative very mm -hmm. mm, chaotic I, mean, I must say i'm even trying to work out what what search terms you use to get this type of design up oh uh, i don't know <laughs> it just i think the algorithm builds up as as i used pinterest so right now, now i'm just open the page and these things appear <laughs> you know interesting so that mm. could potentially lead down you know you've you've built value in your search history so yeah. someone else could use your account to uh to find their own different inspiration um so it's almost like that's a that's mm. a selling value to your own research it's like well the internet knows me knows my mind it knows <laughs> or you can just create different uh boards in pinterest mm -hmm. pinterest as people do and i really love to discover these graphic from from Asia, for example, I, from Taiwan and South Korea, because they are super fresh, super playful. Mm -hmm. Even even Thailand, even like 
you see this kind of um, graphic that you don't normally see. Yeah. Mm. All right. I think we are coming up to three minutes in. Okay. I can start design now. Oh, our sex loss puppy. Uh, we got a question actually. If um, if if anyone knows which of the puppies is either one of us, because obviously there's only two of us here. <laughs> okay. Uh, to be honest, I think they may have different personalities. Like top right could be more of a morning person. Yeah, it's true. Top left is is more me in the morning. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I'm like the, the bottom left, I think. A sad little puppy. Mm. Okay, I will do something. Because I think I we have quite an interesting visual. So I would make it uh, that the priority of our visual. Okay. Like, I can use another visual from here. More variety action. <laughs> we even have some little cats <laughs> missing with a dog here. <laughs> you see? Oh, this is a little part of something. Oh my god. AI is well, crazy. Cat is the opposite of dog, right? Yeah, it works, it? <laughs> I I still don't understand how how AI I understand things honestly. Mm. So for anyone who may be joining midway through, uh, just a run through of what's happening on your screen before your eyes. Uh, <laughs> Oh. We're we're working on a poster design challenge. We've done it a five minutes, and we're now on a ten minute session. Um, a poster of the Adobe Live uh, stream, and we've got some AI generated puppies on a Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how much time do I still have? Uh, Four minutes forty. Mm. When it comes to color, I actually like to play with full saturation RGB color. Just mm -hmm. personal interest. Yeah. I actually I actually wish life would just be in RGB. <laughs> <laughs> you can see all the color infiltration in this. Mm. Mm. So you definitely like the uh, the sort of vibrant approach to things. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes I, well, most of the time I have uh, annoying experience when you print things in C CMYK, you know. I see, yeah. Where um because like we are just students so mostly if we want to print a project is they can just print in cmyk with digital printing mm -hmm. and the color is very very wrong if you're not careful yeah especially when it comes to the blue okay yeah see i always found uh green is the is such a tricky color to reproduce and i think i've spoken oh. about this before on, on other streams especially when it comes to say photography work green in nature intuitively as humans we know when when nature doesn't look right we know when something doesn't look healthy it doesn't look edible and mm. if the green is wrong uh it sends all these subconscious signals to us um and it's, it's so tricky it's the same with skin tones as well it's you can recognize when when something doesn't quite look right and we can't quite put a finger on it. That's interesting. Mm. Mm. 
And when I'm designing, um, when it involves tie face, I like to play with the, uh, the kerning and the, the space between lines. And sometimes I even like break break the word mm -hmm. and place it around with different spacing to see how it looks. So that's the fun thing to work with Photoshop, I think, because if you do this kind of stuff in InDesign, it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Photoshop brings... Oh, was that one minute, I believe? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Um, yeah. So yeah, I guess that is that is one of the benefits with Photoshop is that you've got so much imaging capabilities as well as layout. Um, so uh, I'm just kind of referencing back to some of your existing work where you've got a lot of things that kind of cut out and, you know, almost in a an analog way in a digital format. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's... I'm kind of at a loss on, on how you reach that i imagine there's a lot of like play there's a lot of experimentation and just moving things and seeing what fits what works mm, i spend a lot of time in photoshop i think right. and well if i say this a lot of people might judge me but when it comes to editorial design i didn't do it in InDesign. i do it in photoshop okay because i i, I feel like it gave me more freedom to to experiment with typeface mm -hmm. and paragraph even. Mm. Oof. Well, we're losing a bit of readability here, but... Okay, I think we are almost. I think I'm, I'm done with the 10 minutes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So, 10 minute poster design. And uh, we've uh, expanded along the, the first design. But I do think we've lost some legibility on uh, some of the information. Yeah, it's true. Mm. Mostly about the decision of choosing the typeface. But it's okay. We still have 30 minutes to fix this. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. I think I'm going to take one minute break. Yeah. Just to look and think about what, uh, how do I want to fix this in a 30 minutes version. Mm -hmm. mm. So in terms of a, I'm sorry? in terms yeah. of like a, a style of this, I wonder if uh, I wonder if anyone in the chat can give some sort of like label to it because it is something that I'm seeing more and more lately. Um, this kind of like a I don't really know how best to describe it. I think that's why I'm maybe asking for like some sort of term, but it's like. It's, it's where things are like carefully sort of thrown at it. You know, if, if that makes sense, it's like uh, there, there's a lot going on. Drop my microphone. Uh, there's a yeah, lot yeah. going on, but it's like there is I, delicacy in the way that it's moved, you know? I know a term for it, but I'm not sure it applies to everything. But um, it's called, I think it's called anti-design. <laughs> And yeah, okay. I, I think I think I watch a YouTube tutorial uh, video they describe this of the new trend of design because the the Zen Z designer they are born with um, they are born in a new era so they design um, especially when it comes to graphic design they they design against the rules you know the grid system of how all the rules in the graphic design like we have to do this and that and they, they kind of sort of break everything and just freely moving around the, the, the spaces and throwing more things at them. Mm -hmm. It's also a bit of maximalism. 
Yep. And I, I found it's quite interesting of how different era of designer come up with different movements in terms of design or even artists as well. Yeah. So, so. Well, I mean, trends themselves always come around in cycles. Um, yeah. You know, they're, they just come around with like a, a different, you know, a different iteration of it, a different accent almost. Um, mm. And it, it's, it's similar in some ways to like, you know, say the punk sort of movement of things of being anti you know everything else um so anti-design I, I think is a i think not anti anything term. else it's just like <laughs> anti the the movement previously yeah you know um yeah i think it's the same with the art world if you look at the past like every new movement is always like against the movement made before mm -hmm. um Ah, uh, I remember I'm missing this uh, kind of block, color block. Because I was thinking I want to do this kind of color block behind the typeface so it pops up more and more readability, for example, this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. But, okay. <clears throat> All right. Should we start a 30 minute? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Cue the 30 minutes. In three, two, one. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm going to start one on my phone as well. With this one, I will like to show you I play with the typeface, but Let's create a base for that first. Okay. So we're just going to address the legibility first of all. Yeah, for sure. Even though if you want to go crazy with whatever, it's still designing for other people to perceive the information. Yeah. Sometimes it's annoying to design for other people, but it is what it is. Well, quite often that's where the money comes from. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, I don't want to lose the eye of this puppy. Okay. Here. Mm -hmm. Let's break the grid a bit. <laughs> this corner is very interesting, the top left. Mm. You can see the whole family are gathering for Christmas or Easter or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that I have time, I will think more about the hierarchy of the text. So, we have the name of the life, and then we have the place and time, and then we have the host names. Mm. Do you have a, a set sort of um, like grouping of fonts that you frequently work with or do you Actually, always yes. try and work with something new? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I normally, I have some of my favorite font, but sometimes I begin and just begin as fresh and mm -hmm. mixing new type of new thing to see how it works. What's happening? Okay. I will begin with the, the main title, the title. One thing I like to do is to Mm, mixing typeface 
I love mixing Thai face. Of course, this doesn't like apply to everyone, but I just love the the diverse of the mixing Thai face bring to the to the name that you're working on. For example, this we can start with Ladi. Hmm. Well, let's put it here. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so I have a question for you and even the audience. What do you guys think about Comic Sans? Sorry about that, I was muted. Um, Comic Sans. Uh, hmm. I think there is a time and a place for Comic Sans. Um, of course, it's a comical font. It's, it's designed for comics and uh, and for you know some sort of humorous thing. Um, but at the same time, it's a terrible font. It, it shouldn't be used in uh, you know serious instances. However, one thing I have grown to sort of like love and appreciate with it is that it's actually very legible for a lot of people um, mm. who struggle to read. And, um, you know, so seeing it in an office environment where it's like a, a notice on the, on the fridge of don't steal other people's sandwiches, um, it sort of lowers the tone and it's, it's legible. Everyone can read it. Uh, that being said, I never use it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one fun fact here in Spain, there's a, there's a very famous, uh, soup, um, but I don't remember the name of it. And it, it's a soap packaging in a supermarket, and they used uh, a comic sand on the oh, package. Right. And the pattern is, you know, those um, with the with the caro stripe pattern in Italian kitchen. You know, those kind of pattern. Okay, yeah, like a tablecloth type. Yeah, yeah, tablecloth uh, pattern, and put the comic comic sand as the name of the brand on it, and it's it's. It's one of the most famous uh, soup here really? in Spain. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. Okay, well, uh, I mean, another one is um, papyrus, which Tim has just mentioned. Comic papyrus. Oh, wait a I mean, there there are plenty of sort of uh, fonts that have this unwritten rule against them. Um, you know, even big ones, Helvetica, for example, um, mm. you know, is is often screamed at from lecturers and, and other people of don't use Helvetica because there's so many more that you could go with. Like, just don't fall for one of the most popular and successful fonts of all time. Mm. Um, but then at the same time, it's like, well, do it, you know, go and use that because it is one of the most popular and successful fonts. See how you can stand out from everyone else who's also using Helvetica. Uh, mm. That in itself is a challenge. Um, yeah. I, I see um, I see Helvetica is mostly I think used for presentation where you present and then because it's a neutral typeface so you kind of not really reveal of your whole concept. Mm -hmm. So you know so to present throughout and then boom to present uh, the typeface and uh, the concept of what are you doing they before that 
those lines they use Helvetica. Yep. Because of the neutral neutrality of it. Mm. It's um it's interesting seeing um the way that font design or just typographic sort of design in, in general has evolved through digital times recently. Um, mm. So now you've got like flexible weights. They're not so rigid in going from like a, a thin to a heavy. You can do it via code, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, likewise, there are so many more, um, uh, you know, for example, like in Japan, uh, the language and the character set is very different to Roman characters. And so quite yeah. often you end up with completely separate fonts. But you see a lot of foundries now do so much of a better job of creating a font that works for all or multiple character sets. So that if you are localizing, um, you can actually work with a font that has the same sort of emotional attribute to it, um, rather than having to just find something that's like a close match, uh, which was always a pain before. <laughs> it's true. I was actually thinking earlier today of um, back when I was at college and uni, uh, there wasn't Adobe fonts or Typekit. And so the fonts that we had access to um, were quite often not very good. <laughs> and so uh, we were maybe finding like free fonts from other places and you know forums and other things mm. um but having access to an actual professional font uh really does open doors and it, it adds that extra extra sort of oomph into your design work um just by using a good font uh yeah so students today sound like an old person now um <laughs> students today you've got plenty at your fingertips resources i think mm -hmm. yeah I, I think that's why that's why the anti-design came to be because we got yeah. access to i think we overwhelmed with the uh, information mm -hmm. um, well i mean look at this you're using a different font for every character <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's normally how i play with uh typography yeah before before you know like Oh, if you des design a poster, use one family and change the variety of the family. Mm -hmm. But, you know. So yeah, this is how I normally I play with the, the typeface. Sometimes I change each character, but sometimes I change only one character. For example, this or the... I think it's it's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, no, but this L. Mm. You could potentially even find, you know, within some of the wording. I don't think you've really got any options here. But if you had a good ligature between, say, like, uh, trying to look at what you've got written here, where you could maybe have two characters used up by a ligature of of one font family. Um, mm. Yeah, could work. Course. Yeah, just but I'm looking for a uh, handwritten fonts for this L. And oh my god, I don't remember the name of that font. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Was it uh, an Adobe font at all? From I well, I'll show you my most favorite Adobe font. Um, it goes C. See why, which is a very, I say, geometric. This one is my favorite phone from Adobe. It's very playful. Okay. Yep. You. S oh, sorry. Because you see here the the, the two zeros. The, <laughs> It can be round or like in a rectangle. Oh and, wow! And so it's like, it's randomizing it to some extent, mm. or is it because it's recognized that it's too? I think it's, it's randomized. Be... It. Hmm. This, this. Oh. 
Oh god. And hmm. I don't remember the character, but yeah, oh here. So you will see this number two here. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's playful in a in a geometric geometrical mm -hmm. way, which I love. So that is my favorite phone from Adobe um, library. We've got a suggestion here from Melanie. Um, how about adding some blend modes to the image? Um, mm, it's kind true. of mixing that with some of the text uh, or some uh, distortion, you know, liquefying a puppy's face. I was going to do that, actually. <laughs> Go but for I'm, it. I'm, I'm trying to fix the font, uh, the typeface first, and okay, then I, yeah. I will deal with the image. Yeah. I will. We're going to have some fun with the image, but yeah. uh, how much time do I have left? I think we have about 12 minutes. Uh, 15. 15, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if, you, if you're going to talk about distorting an image, uh, Melanie is your person. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get stuff ripped to shreds if you send some <gasps> photography. But it'll come out great. Really great. Okay. I'm sorry, but I, I can could go on hours with the tie face. But in this time challenge, I think we have to stop it at some point. <laughs> Oliver saying, don't let Melanie near the puppies. Save the puppies. <sighs> well, we are yet to see what Thin's going to do with the puppies. So, who who knows where they're safe? They're safe with me. <laughs> oh. I would love to play also with this, but I don't think we have time. Hmm. Oh. There we go. Do you ever do you ever work with uh, animated things in your posters? You know, we yes. take something like this and then. Is that something that you do, or do you work with other animators? Uh, I, I do that because I'm studying motion graphics, so I okay. mostly do motion animation and video, but I also love to do try with um, kinetic typography. Okay, yeah, cool. Mm, in my motion work, so... How do you find uh, other people on your course in terms of uh, design styles? Does does it match in with what you're working on or is everyone kind of going in all sorts of directions? No, everybody has their own style and techniques to do things. That's good. Um, hmm. I'm thinking about, um, which is also good because you get to see other people work and uh, break your view a bit. Mm -hmm. So you get more refreshed perspective. Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what, I really like this background of the photoshop the transparency background i i think i want to use it oh really as the 
and get an actual image of it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I okay. think you'd either have to create a uh, a pattern layer or just yeah, a yeah. screenshot of the of the background yeah, sure. itself. Mm. Okay, let's just deal with the image first. Let's play with liquify. Oh, the puppies. <laughs> I love liquify. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, once upon a time, I uh, I enter one Discord server and they they have this kind of variation to that you have to uh, fill in before you enter the server. Mm -hmm. the chat server and one of the questions was like what do you do for a living and right. i type i distort image for the living so oh. <laughs> <laughs> i think liquify was actually one of the first tools that i learned in photoshop uh, oh, really? that, and the healing brush uh just because it was it was like the the easiest way to show how powerful something is that you can mm. change what you're looking at um uh, that and the magic wand those, wow. those three things combined gave uh yeah gave yes. real insight into the software it's true i will leave the the puppy um uh, in the center untouched okay Mm. All right, 10 minutes to go. Now, oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, this really is turning it liquid. This is. A digital glitch, but in more organic form. Mm -hmm. mm. So in the liquify, I think we can play with the size of the brush and basically express your <laughs> movement. Mm -hmm. I can see that we have uh, face aware liquify, but that is not aware of a puppy's face. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if another time, I, I think I wish try that. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Okay, to see what is perfect. Okay. Mm. I think I will remove oh, this rectangle. Okay. I will take a quick snapshot of this. Is this a, a specific app just for screenshots? Yeah, for window. Oh. So screenshot different part and you can select like a square selection of part of the screen you want to sc screenshot. <laughs> wow. You know, I actually, I use Windows for the first time in about 20 years the other day. And wow. <laughs> It, it's been experience. a long time. <laughs> well, actually, it was uh, it was quite an experience because I was not only uh, troubleshooting for uh, elderly, like almost ninety years old. You know mm. the the type of situation where it's like, oh, I've forgotten my password. I don't know how to log in. Um, but they were speaking Japanese, and 
I was using their Windows machine all in Japanese as well. Oh、I do not、gosh. speak Japanese, <laughs> not enough anyway.、Um, That's a nightmare. And so, yeah, as a as a crossover of things, it was it was tricky.、Um, it took about an hour just to try and log in properly or change the login rather. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know that、uh, there was a specific app just for screenshots. Well, now we know. Normally, you have to how to say. Press the green screen button where,、mm-hmm. the, and then you go to I think to paint if anybody still use paint these days, and then、right. paste it there. But、yeah. oh, okay. I don't understand why I cannot. I believe by my clock we have five and a half minutes. Okay, I almost finished. Ah, Tim has mentioned、uh, pressing Windows Shift and S for the snipping tool. Uh, allows you to draw a rectangle and save it straight to the clipboard, and I guess you can、oh, paste、wow. it direct into Photoshop or Paint you. if you'd rather use、I'm... Paint. Thank you for the tip. I guess that would be similar to on Mac OS, which is Command Shift Four, and then you can draw a box, and、uh, if you hold or rather tap the spacebar, you can then、uh, select the window with. Its own floating drop shadow as well. We have five minutes left, no? Uh, yep.、Mm. I must admit the、no. um, the transparent texture behind is、uh, is actually adding quite an interesting effect to it. Just imagining it posted up, you know, printed in a, a student hallway or something, that would be <laughs> quite a、uh, a good break from digital to analog. Yeah, that's the thing. I like to play with different type of digital media and platform, and all these their default. Default、uh, interface or it's quite interesting some way.、Mm, I think I want to try with something. With a blur motion and blending mode. Okay. Oh, poor puppy. Hmm. <laughs> 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 I actually like this one. So we we've got like a smoky effect going on. Let's try another blending. Oh no 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 no. Interesting graphic. What do you think? Should I leave the? Oh, this one is so fun. 
should I leave the, the normal puppy picture like as it is or should I completely <laughs> destroy it? Uh, I think I'd like to see one puppy remain a puppy. Ah, it's true. Okay, thank you for the... It's true. So let's do this then. There we go. <laughs> okay, yeah. <gasps> And um, maybe I should change. All right, our final minute. Okay. Have you done any liquify on the text, or is that just the font, like the, the it's, U? It's the font. It's just the font. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm I'm done. I will change something here, but I don't think I have time. So, yep. Here we go. All right. So this is your thirty-minute poster, uh, and if we could toggle back between. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, we'll toggle okay. between the 10 minute version and was it five minute, the, the original one? Okay, uh, okay. Let me export them. Oh. <gasps> Let's just quick Back export. when they were so innocent. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. This is a fail one. Hmm. So this is the ten minute one. So three very different results. Uh, you can be your own judge on which one is uh, more informative for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Hmm. Wait, the order is wrong. Oh, here we go. There From we go. left In to right is 30 minutes, 10, 10 and 5. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, very, very interesting, very different. Um, yeah, very different <laughs> results to uh, what we're used to on Adobe Live. Um, we are actually at time uh, for the stream. Uh, so thank you, Thin, for uh, for oh. going through with this. This has been interesting to see from, uh, from an AI starting point and uh, some typography very playful very energetic uh i hope i hope you've had fun playing around moving stuff and and piecing this together thank you so much for having me i i did have fun but even though i'm not 100 percent happy with the result but it's it, it's interesting to see to challenge myself mm, yeah with this time mm, pressure to see what it kind of come up with but well here you go this is what i have in 30 minutes and 10 and 5. absolutely um amazing so that is uh that's about everything we have for uh, adobe live today but if you want to join in for more goodies uh tomorrow tim will be doing a crash course in adobe after effects uh using audio and uh, I've personally got some requests that I've sent over to Tim, so I will try and join in with the chat myself um, for that. And then Friday, as always, we have uh, Liz with some Adobe Express. Um, so make sure you tune in on Behance at midday. Cool. All right. So 
Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Thin, for sharing your work. And, thank uh, you so much. With uh, everything you're working on. Oh, thank you. We'll see you Have again soon. Have a nice soon. week, people. Definitely. <laughs>